In this Revit tutorial, I'm going to show you how to create a capping or a coping on top of a sloped wall. So for the purposes of this tutorial, I've just got a simple piece of wall. I'm just going to spin that around there to show you. So I've, I've put it on a, uh, a piece of floor just to sort of better place that in 3D space so it's easier to see exactly what we're looking at. So from there, you can see we've got a single Revit wall and I've edited the profile to make it sloped. So if I select the wall, you can see there the original uh, shape of the element. And if I hit edit profile, so I've just changed the sketch line just to give us a sloped wall on which to create the, the capping or the coping. So go ahead and recreate that back into 3D. So if the wall had a horizontal top, um, th this would be a very straightforward exercise. We could just do, well, there's, there's a number of, of tools or strategies we could use to, to achieve the capping or coping. Um, we could create a sweep. Um, we can model it in place. Um, we could use a fascia. We could even use a different wall type and place that along there. The, the problem really arises the fact that the, um, the top of the wall is now sloped. So you could actually model an in-place family uh, to achieve what we, we want. Um, if you're on the full version of Revit, uh, under components, you've got model in place. However, I'm going to show you what I think is probably a, a, an easier, um, slicker solution to the problem. And that's using the fascia tool. Uh, which you obviously can find in both the full version of Revit and Revit LT. So if we go to roof, we've got down here a fascia. Now typically this would be a sort of rectangular section hosted on the, um, the edge of a roof. But a useful little idiosyncrasy of the fascia tool is that you can also host the fascia um, component or the family onto a model line. So if we can place a model line that runs along the top edge of the wall, we can then use that as the host or the path for the fascia. And then the final step is we just need to define a fascia uh, profile, which is the right shape for the, the capping or the coping. So let's break that down into stages. The first stage is to add a model line onto the to, uh, upper surface of the wall so in order to do that we're going to set the work plane so that we can actually tell Revit where or which surface or plane to, to draw the model line on so I'm just going to use the set tool there and I'm going to pick a plane I'm just going to hover over the wall there and you can see that the vertical wall or the surface of the, the outside of the wall is highlighted in blue. That's the plane we want. Click on that. So that's now set. We can now add our model line. So just make sure you're in the architecture menu and model line. And now I can click on the bottom end of the wall and the top. Now with this sort of strategy the way we're doing this with the model line uh, just note that you will have to leave that model line in place in your completed model because that's what the fascia tool is using to to define its path so if you'll find if, if you deleted the, the model line um, your fascia would delete also so the next thing we're going to do is create a profile um, which will form the cross section of the capping or the coping. Um, now we need to pr produce this profile because that's what we're then going to tell the fascia um, system family type to use as it makes the extrusion along the model line. So I've got a file, new family. Now make sure you pick the right family template. So if we go down to profile hosted open this takes us into the family editor don't worry if you haven't been in this um, part of Revit too much it's uh, uh, this is where you create your Revit families um, what we're going to create ie a profile 
is probably the, the most simple Revit family you can create. It's just a 2D shape. What we're looking at there is two reference planes which form a sort of crosshair at the uh, the, inter the insertion point. So um, you can imagine this is a cross section through the wall. Um, the model line is going to run into the screen and out of the screen at that point at the, at the origin, if you like, of these axes. So we just need to sketch out with some lines the cross section of the um, the capping or the coping we want. So let's go to line. Now the wall we've got I think is 290 mil wide, so need to account for that. Um, so let's go. It's got a little bit of an overhang over the wall. Now I'm not going to worry too much about um, the exact dimensions for the purpose of this. Obviously you'll set out exactly what you're after. Um, tidy that up. Now I've made my coping profile asymmetrical. You can obviously just sketch out exactly what you want, any sort of drips under here over the edge of the wall, um, etc. So when you're happy that you've got a closed loop that represents the, uh, the profile of the capping you want, you can now load that back into the project remember at the moment we're in the family editor which is a different uh, part of the environment of the Revit software so I'll hit the load into project button so all it's done at the moment is just made sure that that profile family is available in this project so let's go back to 3d now if we go to architecture roof bring that fascia tool back up there is our um, default fascia type fascias are system families just like walls roofs uh, that is that the system i.e. revit will create the element um, in in the, the project as we need them we can't uh, save a fascia as a standalone revit family so for edit type duplicate Let's call this capping. And you'll see in the type parameters for this particular uh, overall type that we've just created called capping, we can set here what profile this type is going to use. So we need to change that now to the one we've just created. Now we didn't save it and name it, so Revit's just called it family one. Okay, that. So we can now go ahead and select the model line as the host or the path for the fascia. Now we can clearly see that Revit has created the capping. However, it's floating in a sort of free space and not sitting on top of the wall. Now, if that's what you see when you create that, the simple reason for it is that the model line, um, when we drew it, we started here and put the top end there. Um, so the profile, if you remember uh, in the family editor, we were looking sort of at the face on at this profile and the insertion point was there. So it's drawn it over to the left. So just, just keep that in mind when you're defining your profiles that, um, that they will always um, sort of go and follow the path in which, in the direction in which it was drawn. The easiest way to, to do this is just simply now delete that. We've still got the work plane set from before, so we can go model line. At this time, oh, let's just delete that old model line. Model line, start at the top. So now the direction's coming down the wall. Go back to architecture, roof, fascia. Make sure we're on the correct uh, type. So fascia, capping, and select the model line. And there, the capping or the coping now sits where we want it over the top of the wall. 